Well, welcome. We have got a fun shoot planned for today. Um, we are going to be doing a really colorful and robust pasta dish. Um, we are going to be using the Westcott Skylux um, LED lights to do this. Um, we have what's my, it's essentially my go-to lighting setup for uh, tabletop uh, uh, food shots. Um, it really has gorgeous raking light coming from both sides. You're able to shoot from above and, and, uh, and not get in the way of a softbox or any other lighting setup you have there. And it creates this gorgeous edge light and it fills in the shadows. Um, but there are gonna be some challenges and I'll show you how to overcome those. And I'm also gonna show you a little bit about food styling and how uh, we go about presenting a really nice plate of food. So I'm gonna go to the kitchen, I'm gonna grab the pasta and we'll get started. Okay, so here we go. We're, this is the, uh, the final pasta dish that we have. So I'm gonna kind of show you how we, we created this and how uh, um, we got to where we are. Um, so the first thing I did is I, I placed the pasta in a sort of a twisty way into the bowl first. I, I cooked it for maybe three minutes. That allowed the pasta to be flexible and appear cooked, but still have a nice um, buoyancy. It, it has sort of a nice uh, uh, look in the bowl. It's not as flat. If you overcook stuff for photography, sometimes it tends to be a little flat in color, but also in texture, and it'll just sit right in the bowl. So this adds a little elevation to what is sort of a two-dimensional image here, right? Because we're shooting from overhead. So the more we can get it to move and the more bends and the more textures we can create in this image, the better. So what I've done here is I've, I've got the, um, the pasta kind of laid out. Um, and then I went about and took all these different ingredients that were, were essentially par you know, partially cooked and, um, and placed them fortuitously around the pasta and then drizzled a little bit of the marinara sauce on there. And it's a really good method for getting um, marinara sauce to look good. Um, you don't wanna just toss the pasta with the marinara sauce or any kind of sauce because it'll just sort of disappear and vanish. You wanna use, just like you're dressing a salad for food styling, you wanna drizzle it or spray it or just, just anything to create droplets so it's not just this homogenous look. Um, from there we garnish with the basil leaves which we turned to have them reflect the light properly. Um, we, on this basil leaf right here, we were actually to get, we were actually able to get the best of both worlds. We had the light from the softbox reflecting through the leaf of basil. This light source actually brushed across it and created a, a really nice textured highlights on the front surface. So it's this gorgeous looking piece of basil. Um, and all the, all the pasta and everything was, was designed to have sort of a, a bendiness to it and a very fluid motion. And we didn't over garnish it so you can still see the pasta noodles. So there's a lot to keep in mind when you're working with pasta. There's everything affects everything. You wanna build it from the ground up. You don't wanna over style it or over fuss with it, but it's gonna take some work to get it to look good. It will not look good right out of a pan if you just toss it. You're gonna to have to finesse it. You wanna have sort of a, a forced spontaneity, if you will, um, about the pasta. And so once we finished the pasta dish, we kind of created the, uh, um, uh, I didn't know how bold the pasta was like. Normally, normally I would create the, uh, the flavor cues around the dish first and then create the pasta or do it, you know, have two people doing it at the same time. Um, but I always recommend for food photographers, since we're dealing with food styling, working with a food stylist, you know, learning it on your own because it's a really good thing to know. And being a former chef, I had an advantage in that respect because I already understood food, but I still had to understand how it translated to camera and all the tricks involved with getting it to look gorgeous. And not deceitful tricks, but just techniques that are meant to make something look delicious in a two-dimensional medium. So food stylists do this for a living and they're extremely good at it. Um, pasta is one of those things that's very challenging. So if you're working with pizza or ice cream or pasta, working with a food stylist and being educated about what's possible so you can have a good back and forth um, and kind of just letting them do their thing. It, it makes for a really good um, final image because you can focus solely on the composition, but you at least know what's possible on the food styling side of things. So it's worth knowing for sure, especially if you're gonna shoot food, to really understand food styling and how, what they're thinking, how it works, um, and what's possible. So what I did was with the flavor cues is I, I sort of arranged them in a way that looked really nice around the plate and sort of an S pattern that looks really fluid. And then I added, um, some uh, pesto to the mortar and pestle. And then I kind of carved out a little uh, nook there to make it look like I just finished uh, actually creating um, the pesto itself. And then I chopped up little leaves of basil and just flung them around the outer edge where they would kind of go if you were actually grinding something. 
because you're not going to get a perfect pesto in a mortar and pestle. So you have to think about that stuff. So the little pieces around the edges adds a little authenticity to it. Um, and also a little oil where your hand would go while you're working on it. It can be a little messy. So uh, just as long as it's not unappetizing, it's just got to be appetizing. So we had everything very fortuitously laid out. We had the issue of the dark spots along the center of the plate and the mortar and pestle. And then also a very dark area up in the right upper right hand corner of the mortar. Um, so what we did is we, we, I originally put a mirror there, but we, at the end of the day, we, I just decided to put a, a big white card right here to fill it in, to use the light coming from here, just to bounce some light into this side of it without getting any spill onto the side that I wanted to be more dramatic. So there you have it. Um, the, this, this lighting step's really good for not just overhead shots, but side views as well. It brings out textures and hamburgers and sandwiches. Um, it's my go-to lighting setup for food, and it allows a lot of flexibility and a lot of access to the set, for the most part. Um, but they're, you know, they're daylight balanced, and they don't change in, in color temperature or, color inten or light intensity over time. So it's not like daylight, which is constantly in motion. Um, it's a very, very wonderful look to have. So I, I urge you to kind of try it out. Even if you just have one Skylux, you can just use another white card off to the left or to the right um, to, to add the fill. Uh, this, one's, this one's set at um, maybe half power, and this is full power. And the camera settings were F22, 21. Um, I think it was F22, ISO 100, and... Um, um, it was a fairly long shutter speed. I think it was a couple seconds. So it's like shooting in natural light. You're not going to have a very short shutter speed with this volume of light, but it's going to give you a lot of control and the ability to look and see what you're doing very methodically. So I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the tutorial, and I urge you to kind of take these techniques and, and bring them to your own set. And thank you for watching.